Okay, so just to add to the woman part, um, in Revelation 17, where it talks about the woman on the beast, she's the harlot, uh, and it's the same word, so, um, that right there is confirming that it's a false doctrine that do not teach the word and only the word. Okay. So here's a, another example of woman. Um, Revelation 17, talking about the woman on the beast. So she's the, this particular woman is Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So anyway, so here you see she's referenced as a woman, a wife. So... These are they which are not defiled with women, meaning churches, no matter what they are, whether they're proclaimed to be Christian or Catholic or, you know, Presbyterian or, you know, Protestant, whatever. These churches that are not following the true word of God, they're doing their own thing. They have their own doctrines. And they're like, we're not going to do what the Bible says. We think we should do it this way. All those 40-something thousand denominations of Christianity, so-called Christianity, those are women. Those are what the Bible refers to as women. It's a church. And those who are not defiled with them are those who don't believe that what they say, their false doctrine... And they're not going to be defiled by it. They've come out of her, my people, as the Father said, as Yeshua said. Come out of her, my people. Her, her. He's talking about church, a false church that does not preach the full gospel. 100% only the word and stick to it. So they're not defiled because they don't listen to that garbage. They stick with the word of God. Okay, so we got that established. For they are virgins. We'll click on that. A maiden, a virgin. So, um, primarily it means a virgin, a woman who has never had sexual relations. Now here it says, can it be extended, but how come down here it doesn't say a man or a woman. It says a woman who has never had sexual relations, a female virgin, beyond puberty but not yet married, figurally believers. So here's what it, this is what it means in Revelation 14. It means believers when they are pure, i.e. faithful to Christ, their heavenly bridegroom. That's what the, ver the word virgin means here. As the Holy Spirit taught me through many of the things he's shown me that you've got to put down your carnal sense of things. There's oh, and, and all of scripture, and from what I have learned, there is spiritual meaning behind these words. And if all you're looking at is the carnal, oh, it says not defiled with women, so that must mean male virgins, then you're only looking at the carnal and you're not looking at the spiritual, which means you don't have eyes to see. So, pray ab about it. If you don't believe what I'm saying, pray about it. I just showed you in the Strongs where it said that they are faithful. Virgins re refers to faithful followers of Christ because he is their beloved bridegroom. And that is exactly what it's saying here. Um... These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Um, I'm sure that there are uh, a number of male Jewish uh, believers in Yeshua who are virgins that would follow him wherever he goes. But it's mostly... <laughs> If you look at the whole context of verse four and five, it's not—it's not singling out, a, a, you know, a, a, a male or female. It's singling out a group of people who are faithful to Christ, and 
you know, to say these are the the these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Are you not saying that those of us who are female, including myself, who are faithful followers of Yeshua, are not following him wherever he goes? Because this following him wherever he goes is because he's our shepherd. That's what the sheep do. They follow the shepherd wherever he goes. And and they listen to his voice and they they go where he tells them to. So for it only to be male Jewish virgins is um, kind of silly because, you know, what about all of us females? We might not be physical virgins, but um, we are his bride. We are faithful followers of him that follow him wherever he goes. Okay, so here's the next part that gets stuck is... It says these were redeemed from among men. So there's where they get the ma the male Jewish man. Okay, so as we click on this, the number is 444 Anthropos. A man, human, mankind. Yes, it can mean a man, a male. But in this instance, because of the group that it's talking about, it is referring to mankind. Human beings, which are male and female. So these people were redeemed, which means they were bought and paid for with the blood of Yeshua's sacrifice. And he's going to redeem them from among human mankind on the earth. Mankind. See it right there. That's all of us. So just because it says men doesn't mean males. It means mankind, which we are all mankind because of, um, you know, being sons and daughters of Adam. Okay, continuing on, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. First fruits. These are the ones he's going to take first because they matured for first. The first fruits of the field that are harvested are always that crop which has matured first. That's why they're called the first fruits. They matured first. So the bride is the barley. She's the first fruit because it, it, it takes less to get her to separate herself from the world, which is why she's the bride. Um... Those of the wheat harvest that didn't want to hear and, and have to have a little, you know, they got to have the tribul tribulum drug over them with a, you know, a stone, a heavy stone laid on, on top of them. <laughs> Thank you, Rock Kadesh. You just reminded me of a scripture that. Um, of course, we know who the rock is, and uh, they did, um, not only did the oxen drag a tribulum around, you know, they went around in a circle to beat the, uh, or to help get the chaff separated from the wheat, from the kernel, um, but, you know, sometimes a heavy stone was dragged across it, just to put some weight on it, to help it get it, get it done. Uh, the stone being on top of them. So. Um, and in their mouth was found no guile. Uh, I heard it said that, um, you know, this means that they didn't lie, which means they had to have been babies because babies can't lie. And of course, you know, once you get to be even a toddler, you can lie. Well, guile doesn't necessarily mean lie here. It, it does in a sense, but you have to remember that in the Hebrew, the words have much deeper meanings than and more meanings than our English translation. And guile here, we'll click on it, um, means deceit or treachery. So yes, it can mean a lie, 
but the understanding, let's see, on it, um, I thought that I saw, um, as, as you see the words over here, subtlety, trickery, you know, yeah, it's deceit, it, yes, it is lies, but what, what I believe that it is saying is that the people who are the bride, who are the 144,000, when they speak of the kingdom of heaven, when they speak of Yeshua the Messiah, when they speak about scripture, they only say the truth. They only say what the Holy Spirit has revealed to them as the truth. In other words, they don't go claiming false doctrine. Um, for instance, we all know there are certain um, divisions of so-called Christianity where some don't even believe that Yeshua is the Son of God. Some don't believe that, um, you know, and they believe they believe in Yahuwah, but they don't believe that Yeshua, Jesus, is his son. Um, or, okay, I'm just going to come out and say it. Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, you know, uh, Catholics. Um, things that they speak are not biblical. It's not true. I'm sorry, but the Word of God says that Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is the Son of God, and so therefore, if you are a follower of Him, then you have to believe that. You, you can't be someone who follows the Lamb wherever He goes, and then claim that He's not the Son of God. So this is what it means. It means, in their mouth was found no guile. In other words, no false doctrine, no deceit. Um, you know... They're not saying that Mary is, is the most blessed above Yeshua and that she's to be revered. And, uh, and please don't misunderstand me. M Mary was blessed. Obviously, she was a blessed woman. And I will hug her when I see her in heaven. But she's not to be revered above the one who gave the sacrifice. And we know that that happens in certain places and certain groups that call themselves, well, they don't really call themselves Christians, but you know what I'm trying to say. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, th this without fault doesn't mean you've never sinned. We're all sinners. Um, even those babies that were slaughtered we are all born into sin, which is why Yeshua said, you will not see the kingdom of heaven unless you are born again. So how can babies be innocent? In the natural, yes, they're innocent. In our carnal, natural world, yes, they're innocent. They haven't, they haven't sinned yet. They don't know what it is. But because they were born into flesh, Flesh is the sin that covers us. It's our flesh that makes us sin. We are dualistic in nature. We are flesh and spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh. So if, when you are born into this world, you are born into sin. It's in scripture. So... Even those babies that were born, that were slaughtered, that were two years and under, they were born into sin. So this doesn't mean that they were without sin. We're all born into sin. Every single one of us, which is why we are here in the first place. The without fault means once you become a believer and a follower of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are covered by His blood and his sacrifice, and so the Father only sees the righteousness of his Son when he looks at us. That's why you are without fault. 
fault doesn't mean sin. It means you're blameless. Blameless because you are covered by his blood. That's what makes you blameless. It has nothing to do with what you've done or what you haven't done. It's because of him and his sacrifice. That's what makes you blameless. So if you do not follow him wherever he goes and you believe in false doctrine, then you are not without sin. I mean, I'm sorry, you're still with sin. The, you are not blameless. The only thing that makes you blameless, let's go ahead and click on that, is if you're covered by his blood. And the only way you're covered by his blood if you is if you believe that he is the son of God and that he died on the cross for you to atone for your sins and that on the third day he rose. That's the only thing that makes you blameless. Um, and of course, Yeshua's bride is blameless. He's coming for a, a bride that is without spot or wrinkle, blemish, blameless. It's his bride. His bride is without spot or wrinkle. Um, you know, you're either. hot on fire which is the bride or you're lukewarm now of course if you're cold uh, and who knows maybe maybe being cold can also uh, uh, refer to those who say you know the once saved always saved yeah i believe in jesus and yes i believe in god but they do not in any way shape or form they don't go to church they don't read their bible they don't pray they just think you know when i die i'm going to heaven and that's all i need to worry about those might be considered cold. The lukewarm might be those who go to church, they read their Bible, they go to Bible study, but they don't, they haven't separated themselves from the world. The bride is set apart. Anyway, um, so, like I said, if you, if, um, if any of this is not, uh, um, sitting well in your spirit and you're just not quite sure and then like I said uh, pray about it and pull up do your own study pull up um, this is Bible Hub go up to the versions and go to Strong's I, I like the KJV I know sometimes other versions um, uh, can give you know a little maybe a little more um, understandable interpretation but I like to stick with KJV because I um, I don't know I just I like it better <laughs> so um, but, and then you know if you're not sure just click on these words where that you're well it says men click on it oh well, my cursor is going crazy and um, you know, go to go to the Strong's and read the meanings of the word yourself, and then ask the Holy Spirit to confirm that. Okay, yeah, this does look like that's what it's saying. Um, and and I, I just wanted to get this done because I said that I would, and and I it's in the title of my Tube Shabbat videos, and so I don't want people to say, oh, you never talked about the hundred forty four thousand, so poo on you. <laughs> um. But anyway, I think for the most part, you guys who are of the bride, you know who you are. And so, you probably already knew this, but this is for those who may not know. These are people who are going to be called out to, to help with the harvest. I've been shown in dreams. Other people have been shown in dreams. There's other studies. 119 Ministries has a video on the 144,000. They use scripture to back it up as well. So you can go there. And I'm sure there's lots and lots of others. Okay, everybody. Um, I was hoping to finish this up in this video. And um, Abba says uh, not to do that because <laughs> there's still some information that I wasn't considering that needs to go with this. 
um, if I'm going to do it properly. Uh, every time I would think about the two witnesses that will be prophesying, um, I was like, uh, I know that they are supposed to be protected as well during the Great Tribulation, and and I just knew that there was more to it than what I perceived. And um, before I get into that, let me go back to the bride part of the 144. Uh, we're going to go over, we're going to read uh, Psalm 18, because that kind of confirms that they will be endowed, those who... Um, will be here, the 144,000 will be endowed with power, supernatural powers, and that they will be taken first. Psalm 18 proves that. So um, let's go ahead and read that, and then I'll get into the rest of the two witnesses that are supposed to be in Jerusalem. And you guys, oh my gosh, I didn't I didn't do enough research about this, but... Um, well, let me just, I'll say that before we get into that and after we read Psalm 18. So let's read Psalm 18. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing. We're going to just start in verse 5 because um, basically the gist of this psalm is uh, King David is um, being surrounded by his enemies. He's uh, fearing for his life and he cries out to the Father for help. And... <clears throat> as you see when we read you'll see what happens and this is a type and shadow of us of those that are crying out which I believe this this psalm is getting ready to come to pass like any moment now seriously because this will be us crying out to him to save us when we start seeing the major things happening and then he will come down and snatch us out of here. So, um, starting verse 5, it says, The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon Yahuwah and cried unto my Elohim. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. So this is him coming up off of his throne. It will be, well, I can't get into that, but um, it'll be when we see Yeshua in the air and we go up to meet him because he's stepped up off his throne. Um, that's why the earth is shaking and trembling. Then there was... Verse 8, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire came out of his mouth, devoured. Coals were kindled by it. This is, uh, we'll be seeing, you know, like, meteorites coming down. He bowed the heavens also, and came down. Right there. He's saying that he, he stepped up off of his throne, and he came down. And darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub, and did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of skies. Remember, when he appears, he's going to have to be cloaked because otherwise he would scorch the earth. Um, it, it, it's the same uh, when he came down, when, he, when Moses went up to meet him. I don't know if you've seen the story... Uh, there's actual physical proof of or Mount Sinai that um, the tops of those mountains were scorched. They're, they're black on the top because that's when he came down, he had to be cloaked uh, to keep from killing Moses and then the, the rest that went up there to meet him, the 70. Okay, um, <laughs> the 70. Uh, I just realized I said that. Hope you guys caught it. 
uh, yeah, we'll have to go back and check that out. Oh my gosh, this word is, it just never ends. You can't, you can't, it never ends. It just goes on and on and on. There's no end and no beginning. Okay, continuing on. Um, verse 13 says, uh, Yahuwah also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, <clears throat> the voice of a trumpet, hailstones and coals of fire. This, and gave his high his highest voice that will be the voice of the trumpet and the shout that that we will hear in second Thessalonians four seventeen. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of water were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Yahuwah, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. Um you know how we know he's close? This is already happening, folks. Water disappearing. You know, bottoms of lakes being seen because the water just disappeared. Foundations of the world were discovered. That's cracks in the earth. This is how you know he's close. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. Um, you know, we have to remember this is the creator this is our Elohim <clears throat> coming down from heaven. He's not going to be uh, an image of a man floating in the sky like we see in all the images. Uh, it's going to be way bigger than that when he comes. That's why he said, every eye shall see me. Okay. Um, okay. Verse 16, when it says, he sent from above, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. Waters means chaos. It means uh, all the trouble that is on the earth. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but Yahuwah was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place so many people have gotten dreams of being in a large room that's it right there it says he brought me forth it means he he came and got me he delivered me because he delighted in me um you know i was i'm thinking that maybe just the bride gets a glorified body which makes sense because she was the only one ready to be able to go. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the ones that will be prophesying in Jerusalem won't be just mere men. Maybe they are in translated bodies. Maybe they are, you know, just like the bride, but their focus is to focus on Jerusalem for those Jews who refuse to believe that Yeshua is Mashiach.
so that's probably the description of the ones that are of the, you know, all the 12 tribes, even though the bride is too, as we've already discussed and I think part two um, about being grafted in. We're all part of the 12 tribes, the bride and those, you know, uh, natural Jews that are described in Revelation 14. So if you guys know of something to add to that, then please post it because I would, uh, you know, and I'll continue to do some research on it too. Uh, but anyway, getting back to Psalm 18. Um, okay, we, we were... We left off at verse 19. So verse 20 says, Yahuwah rewarded me according to my righteousness. So this proves that Yeshua has come and picked up his redeemed because it says that his rewards are with him when he comes. So uh, David's saying here he's been rewarded <coughs> according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. Um, meaning, you know, without um, blemish, spotless. For I have kept the ways of Yahuwah and have not wickedly departed from my Elohim. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore hath Yahuwah recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful, with an upright man thou wilt show thyself upright, with the pure thou wilt show thyself pure, show, show thyself pure, and with the froward thou wilt show thyself froward, for thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. For that would light my candle, Yahuwah my Elohim will enlighten my darkness, so he in verse twenty he's saying he will lighten his candle, which means he has oil. And I noticed something too that some of the things that we read in the New Testament that we think is just for the bride. <clears throat> um, if you go read the parable of the ten virgins, it, it you'll see that um, it also pertains to those um, Jews who come to. Yeshua during Jacob's trouble. But that's a whole other study. <laughs> so, um, anyway, verse 28 says he, he lit his candle, which means he had oil, and he will enlighten my darkness. For 29, for by thee I have run through a troop. Okay, now here is where you know he has been translated. He's already been picked up and been translated um, because if you read the big, big, you know, all of Psalm 18 in the beginning, you'll see that he was he couldn't his enemies were overcoming him, and he couldn't fight him off, which is why he cried out, you know, help me, because he's like I can't, they're too strong for me, as we read it, the enemies were too strong, and so he had to cry for help, and now, pay attention to the difference, something has happened. In verse 29, for by thee I have run through a troop, which is like a band of marauders, and by Elohim have I leaped over a wall. That's given the hind's feet, a deer's feet. As for Elohim, his way is perfect. The word of Yahuwah is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. And hopefully after I get through with this, I can go over Song of Solomon really quick, because the bride... The Shulamite woman is is referred to as a warrior after he picks her up and puts her in the garden. It took me a, a little while to understand what was really being said there because it's, you know, because of the way it's written so poetically, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to show you what it's saying. And the bride, who is, you know, my beloved of King Solomon, the Shulamite, she is described as a warrior when he starts talking about her. So it's like, what? So he's trying to tell you something there. I'm just trying to confirm that the bride does get translated. Okay, uh, where were we? Uh, he's a buckler. Uh, verse 31, for who is Elohim save Yahuwah? 
or who is a rock save our Elohim? It is Elohim that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Uh, and let me just add real quick for those who don't. If you haven't watched um, many of my videos, whenever it says God, I say Elohim. Because God is just a title and it can be referred to to pagan God, so I don't say God. And when it says Lord in all caps, I say the Father's name, Yahuwah. Because, um, or if it's in lower case, then I say Adonai. Uh, continuing on. Let's see, where were we? Verse 32. It is Elohim that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hind's feet or a deer's feet. In other words, being able to leap and setteth me up upon high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Do you see what he's saying? He gives him great strength just like he did Samson. That supernatural power. Samson wasn't strong because he, you know, worked out every day. <laughs> he had supernatural power from from up on you know, from heaven, from Elohim. Verse 35, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. So we know that this, when it's describing the, those who are of the 144,000, it means that they have Yeshua as uh, their Savior. Because when you click on that word salvation in the Strongs, in verse 35, the name is Yesha, which is where Yeshua comes from. Deliverance, rescue, salvation, safety, welfare. And thy right hand hath holden me up. Thy right hand is also Yeshua. He's at the right hand of the Father. And thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. So, you see, he's... Before, he was like, my enemies are too strong, I can't do it, I need your help. And I don't think it was just, um, you know, it. it's not just a, uh, in the spirit. I believe this is in the physical. Because um, he's saying, I have consumed them, have wounded them that were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength into the battle. Just like uh, Samson. Thou hast subdued unto me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto Yahuwah, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Uh -huh, that, that goes back to the 72. Oh my gosh, I just now saw that, you guys. I did cast them out as dirt in the streets. What did Yeshua say to the 72? He says, go into all the houses where I send you, and if they don't receive you, then leave that house and kick the dirt off of your sandals and don't return. Wow. Thou hast delivered. Do you see how awesome he is? How you, when you go searching, you find these things. I, I literally, that was in real time, you guys. I found that. <laughs> Uh, thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, that, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. So, um, uh, and this also, well, I might as well go ahead and finish reading it. Um... Verse 45, the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. Verse 46, Yahuwah liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let Elohim of my salvation be exalted. It is Elohim that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. As soon as I read the word avengeth, the avengers came to mind, because the enemy likes to portray these superheroes as, you know, they are the real, they are the uh, a type and shadow of what the 144,000 are going to be, in my opinion. But they are the imitation. And if you 
there's going to be those on the earth too. Trust me. <laughs> Think of all the superhero movies you've seen where the good guy is fighting the bad guy. That's going to be going on. Um, because we know that as in the days of Noah that angels were mating with women. So there were hybrids and, and in Greek mythology and Roman mythology, they're called demigods because they're half mortal, half human, which is what all the superheroes, the Marvel and the DC comics, that's what they are. They're half human, half supernatural. Anyway, um, verse 48, he delivereth me from my enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violence. Therefore will I give thanks unto Yahuwah. Unto thee, O Yahweh, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. So, um, that uh, is a, um, a little snapshot there of um, uh, what's going to be going on with uh, those who are in translated bodies. Now, whether or not it's um, both groups of 144, or like I said, the bride first because she was ready first, or if those prophesying the two witnesses, that you know the well the the one witness, which is the the 72 that will be prophesying in Jerusalem, uh, will they be translated? Okay, everybody. So. I think that's going to wrap it up for the 144,000 and what I wanted to share. And I'm sure that's not all there is to it. Um, other people have probably found more things and uh, and there's probably more things that haven't even been revealed yet. And there may be some things that won't be revealed until we're there. So anyway, uh, I hope this has helped you. If nothing else, I hope that it helped you to realize that there's so many hidden things, hidden manna in his word that he wants us to search for, as I've said over and over. Um, and, and also one other thing before I finish up is uh, Psalm 144 is almost verbatim saying the same thing that Psalm 18 says. Hmm. So, just saying. 18, 2018, 144, I don't know. I'll let you decide. So I pray this study has blessed you. Thank you for being patient. I, I've had a lot of technical difficulties this morning. I'm sure that you know who doesn't want this information being put out. So I pray that you're blessed and stay strong. Be ready. That's one reason why I think he pushed me not not to debate other people's interpretations of who they were or whatever, but to put an extra call out to those who, if you believe in your heart and in your spirit that you've been called as part of those groups, then he's saying get ready. Um, get in line and be ready because he's about to call us. So... I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Shalom.